And uh, this is in contrast to the Skittles learning agent. The key learning is another form of reinforcement learning. Um, and it's motivated by this example with tic-tac-toe. So we all know that, that a perfect player uh, playing tic-tac-toe um, will get a will get a stalemate. And this is basically right here we have um, uh, we, we've test we've done the Skittles agent against um, uh, I think random agent uh, in tic tac toe and we you know and w where the computer's playing X the, the kind of the Skittles agent is playing X and here we and we notice you know from, from start of the game he goes on the side and then and then you know make sure to make sure to block and then uh, you know blocks again and ends up getting a stalemate at the in the end I mean the random player doesn't play particularly particularly well. However, here's another case where it's a little strange. So we have X going here, and we end up with a stalemate. But, you know, right here, for example, the random player does a stupid move, moving here, and, and the smart player should play over here, but the Skittles agent plays over, over on this side, and, and it's like, wait a minute here, that's really strange. Um, and he does it twice, in fact. He does it here again in this game, and then he ends up getting a stalemate. And the question is, why is that? And the reason is that the Skittles agent has only two states. It has win or lose. And so... And, and, and so if he wins, it's one thing. If he loses, everything else. So so it's treating stalemate like a win. So it treats a win just as valuable as a, as a stalemate, and so that's just not going to work in, in a case that has multiple states. So in this case, we don't need to generalize the cases with more than two outcomes. So we have win, lose, and stalemate. And so we have some kind of reward at the end of the game. Uh, we have a reward of one if we win, negative one if we lose, zero if we if it, with with the stalemate. In Q learning, what we, what we have is the following: we have some kind of table, uh, which we'll call Q, uh, and that's just historical, uh, and uh, which is essentially just a state action kind of like what we saw with the Skittles agent. But in this game, we're going to try to estimate the reward. Um, so, for instance, right at the end of the game, we know the reward. So if the action is 3, in this case, uh, we win out of, uh, immediately, and so our reward is 1. If the action is 2, we, we lose immediately, and so our reward is negative 1. So we know that at the end of the game, we know that for certain. Um, uh, in many games, not NIM, uh, uh, one doesn't always win from a perfect move. You know, what if the perfect move gives a win 10% of the time and a stalemate 90% of the time, right? You know, you still want to be able to do the perfect move. Um, and, and so the Skittles agent doesn't deal with that at all. All right. So rather than setting the value to the reward, we're going to push the estimate, which is the, the, the value that's in our Q table, uh, we're going to push it a little bit towards the reward. So we're going to have an equation that looks something like this. We're going to replace the value of, uh, we're going to update our value for the Q uh, for a state action pair, uh, you know, plus some uh, learning rate, some small uh, um, uh, constant, uh, and then times this this piece here, which is the reward minus the uh, current value. And so essentially, if this part of it is zero, that means that we have perfectly estimated the reward. All right, and so we wouldn't need to update. So if we had a perfect estimate of the reward, then we would not need to update. Otherwise, we're just going to push it a little bit in, the, in that direction. And so the learning rate um, itself is going to be some small number. Uh, so for so going back to this example, imagine that the learning rate is 0.3. We're gonna we're gonna do this. Our reward here is one for winning, and then the current value was was zero. We're gonna update it and we're gonna push it a little bit at at, at uh, point. Uh, uh, 0.3. Um, if we then saw it again, we would uh, start by the 0.3 and we would add uh, alpha or the uh, learning rate times the reward minus the current value and we get a little closer. So notice this is getting a little closer to 1 uh, each time we win and so on. And if we lost from that action somehow, which we wouldn't in NIM, but imagine another game that might be where, where NIM is a bit more probabilistic, uh, we may uh, uh, it'll kind of get pushed down a little bit and pushed up and eventually it should settle in on a decent um, value. So if the table should estimate the reward at the end of the game, what should the, the, this table do when it's not at the end of the game? Well, really what, the, what Q learning does is it says that perhaps the best value 
from the Q table for the next state, that's what we should estimate. So in other words, you know, the last state action value should match the reward. The next to last state action value should match the last state action value, and so on, kind of percolating back. So for example, so what we're so this is really the way that we're that, that we're writing it. We're updating it based on the next state and all the possible actions, and the kind of the best value of that is what we want to estimate. Um, and this is kind of like minimax, where 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 we have we're trying to estimate the best value of all of my choices, and that's what I that's what I'm going to be choosing. Um, it's different than minimax in that we're we're doing an estimate, and it can work in in some kind of probabilistic uh, uh, sense. So this is kind of our final uh, Q learning equation. We kind of update it based on reward. And this reward only is zero all the time, except for at the end game. Um, we have an, we have uh, the the best Q for the next state, uh, and and another kind of separate learning rate gamma for uh, for that um, in in, in uh, there's Python code for it, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, um, uh, go through that possibly in another um, um, in another uh, movie, uh, but but basically it's just like the it's the Skittles agent. So we have you know if, if the state's not in Q, we start off a table and we set all the values to zero. Uh, um, if this is the kind of random move. Uh, um, if you know, sometimes sometimes we might choose a random move, and sometimes we might want to, and we'll see why that may be important. But most of the time, we might choose the top choice, the top value. Um, and if it's not the last action, then the reward is none, and we update the Q based on the equation that we just that we just did. Now, uh, this is what the Q should look like as if it were an image. This is a table. So this is the state action pairs and white is high value, black is low value. And notice that you know for state two I want to take one, so that should have the highest value. State three it should be uh, uh, take two and so on. You know state eight for example I should take three to get me down to the bad number five. And notice five is all bad. Um, and so this is what the table should look like. Now if I play Q learner against random this is what I get. I learn the end game, but then I don't learn anything else. And the reason is that basically because of random, even really perfect moves over here will just as likely cause a, a uh, uh, sorry, really bad, so for instance, a perfect move up here, let's say it's even a bad move, uh, uh, will, will give kind of random results by the end of the game. The only one that we see would be at, at the end. So if QLearner plays against random, it, it it basically learns a terrible game. It learns to play randomly, essentially, except for at the very very end. So it becomes important how to train your Q learner. Uh, you cannot simply uh, uh, train it against random. Here it is against perfect, and of course it learns to play perfectly. Um, and, but it can also learn uh, by by uh, playing itself. And what happens is at first it looks just like uh, at first it looks just like. Uh, um, uh, the random, right? It learns the end game, and then, um, and then, and then uh, uh, doesn't doesn't learn it uh, in the past. Um, and then, um, but then, as as it gets better, it learns the game up until the end game, and then it learns the game after that. So, so the so it gets better and better uh, um, as as it goes as it goes along. So that's pretty much a summary of Q learning and how it um, can be applied to um, uh, something like like NIM, and of course you can apply it to Tic Tac Toe or any any other game with very little uh, um, very little difference.